Hello Aqua friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole and today I want to talk about the steps involved in making realistic fur and I'm laying out some steps for you on this piece of paper and we'll go through them together. So it's all about layering your, your steps, layering the different techniques as you go along painting an animal. First I'm going to talk about brushes. To lay down your initial wash, wet on wet, it's helpful to have a flat brush for that. Your round brush, that's really the workhorse of your painting, and round brushes do come in all sizes. For very fine details and long strokes, I do love to use rigger brushes, also known as script liner brushes. They also come in all kinds of sizes. Also, love to use texture brushes that I make myself by using an old brush that lost its shape and then I further pound on the ferrule to get the bristles to become really spread out and this type of homemade brush is fantastic for dry brushing. So beginning wet on wet I am going to put my first layer down and I want to show you um, a trick to use if you're doing baby animals and you want that really fuzzy appearance. You can wet your paper beyond your border and you can let those edges bleed out and they will become very fuzzy and you will get a really soft effect of fur. So I'm wetting my paper beyond the borders and then we're just gonna drop in some paint. When we drop in the paint, we're going to stay within our borders, but it will bleed outside of the borders. So now the paper is wet and it's going to start spreading like it already is beyond the borders of my drawn shape. You can further manipulate this by picking up your paper and moving it in the direction you want the paint to bleed in. While our paper is starting to dry is when we can get some definition of brush strokes in by working wet on damp. And for this example, I'm working on a diagonal and I'm gonna be painting in the direction the fur goes. So your paper will be slightly glistening and when you use a thicker consistency of paint, you will get defined brush strokes, but they'll still be soft and it will blend into your base coat and it'll look like fur. And you can tell my edges are bleeding, but I am still getting some definition. So I'm getting some texture, which is exactly what I want. Now on the other side, I'm going to show you what short hair is going to look like and basically you are just going to do the exact same thing but you're going to use shorter brush strokes in order to do short haired animals. So working wet on dry you can see that my brush strokes are defined they're not going to melt into the paper like they did in the second step. So I'm getting more definition in my brush strokes. And if I want darker brush strokes, then my puddle of paint needs to be a little bit thicker. So in my second example, I have a thicker consistency of paint. And on the opposite side here of my square, I'm doing tiny brush strokes for the hair in a darker color. So it's the exact same color, it's just the pigment. It has more pigment and less water. So you can see how this is really standing out compared to my watery mixture. Now I can also do somewhere in between using a medium consistency. And notice with just a quick flick of the wrist, you can get some very realistic 
brush strokes that really mimic the hair of an animal. So for my dry brushing example, I thought that um, I would leave this one blank so I can show you how the toothiness of your paper could work to your advantage for the dry brushing technique. So in this example, I'm going to use my round brush first and I'm going to load it up with paint, but it's going to be a very dry paint. I could even dab off any extra moisture onto a piece of paper towel and I'm going to use the belly of the brush sideways and I just want to smear it really onto the paper and pick up that toothy texture. This would be good for that fuzzy kind of fur that might be around um, the muzzle of the animal that you're drawing and that you're painting. Um, you can put this texture on top of the steps one, two, and three that we already did, and you can get some lovely effects. In this example, I'll use my self-made brush that I had wrecked on purpose <laughs> to get some very wispy lines. So I would suggest that you use a scrap piece of paper and you can try these different techniques out and see which sort of dry brushing is going to suit your needs for whichever animal that you're drawing. Now in these last examples I wanted to show you what happens with trying to paint in white hair and how do we represent white hair. We would have to represent it with warm tones or cool tones and you could use a variety of different colors doing this. In this example I'm going to use raw sienna and a little bit of blue gray and I'm going to pick up a little bit of blue gray on my brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of raw sienna and I'm starting off with a very watery mixture because I don't want to go too dark too fast. I'm going to give that a minute or so to dry and I can drop in some uh, darker colors in a second. While that's drying we'll move on to the wavy hair and I can show you how I go about painting wavy hair. So we're always going to do our steps, our layers. The first layer wet on wet and then coming in wet on damp and so on and so forth. So to represent wavy hair, we're just going to paint in a curly or wavy fashion, but we're not going to try to paint every wavy hair. We're going to look at your reference photo and where the hair is in clumps of waves and where you see those patterns, that's what you're going to paint. So you're going to follow a clump of hair and you're just going to repeat that pattern to get the idea that this is a wavy haired animal. Some animals are so wavy that it's almost like a corkscrew type of fur. And so you're just going to follow your reference photo and you're going to repeat those shapes in those clumps. You will get soft edges, you'll get harder edges. The more paint you have in certain areas will be your shadow areas. And of course, as your paper dries, you'll have more defined brush strokes. So there you have it. Now, coming back to my white hair, the sheen has gone, so I'm just going to mix up a little bit of this gray here and just show you that you could represent some of the shadows of your animal just by adding in some gray tones. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this breakdown of the steps involved in making realistic fur is helpful in your next watercolor animal adventure.